Friday mornings. We have a great show today uh, with some terrific guests. In fact, uh, I'm donning my uh, uh, Crimson Wave athletic gear. I, I shedded my, uh, my blazer for today's show so that I could uh, get my sports gear on. Um, we've got some guests, and we're going to dive into some Crimson Wave athletics today. Uh, but first, I wanted to provide um, some answers to two of the most common questions I've been getting uh, as I talk with people out and about in the community about CCSJ. So the first one is, um, one, how are your students doing? And I, I always appreciate that, that question because I think people are so cognizant of the challenges that some of uh, our, the college students and our graduating seniors last year uh, had to overcome in dealing with the pandemic and what that meant to their learning environment. And what I want to say confidently to everybody listening is they are doing fantastic. Um, any concerns about our incoming freshmen, given that senior year, really have been unfounded. It's a very engaged student body. Uh, attendance in class is up. Our midterm grades are significantly improved year over year. Overall, there's a very positive feeling on campus, which just shows how resilient our student body is. And I think that probably is the case at a lot of college campuses and hopefully high schools and, and um, uh, middle schools and elementary schools around. Um, and, and just a testament to the students, the, the faculty and the staff in terms of, um, you know, getting back to, to normalcy. The second com most common question I get is, how is the residence hall coming along? Uh, so we've been in the news quite a bit lately, uh, a pretty transformative uh, initiative undergoing, uh, that we're undergoing at, at CCSJ with residence halls coming. Um, so the answer to that is, uh, we've got the construction site being, uh, site being prepped. Uh, we've got an aggressive timeline um, but, and we'll no doubt have to manage some of the challenges related to, to COVID supply chain issues and everything else, but our partners are up to the task. We are still targeting a move-in date for fall of 2022. Remain very, very excited about that. So uh, uh, for any of you listening and for those of Wade Nation always wondering uh, how things are going with those two main questions, I wanted to get that out there first and foremost. So speaking of fall of 2022, I would be remiss. If I didn't mention our open house, which goes, which is uh, tomorrow, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., we already have a lot of RSVP students coming through uh, to see the campus, but no appointment is necessary. Please come visit the campus, take a tour, learn about some of the amazing things going on at CCSJ. Um, if you can't visit tomorrow, you can always uh, visit our website, uh, schedule an appointment. One of our admissions representatives is. Uh, ready to take care of you and, uh, and answer in any and all of your questions. So with that, uh, speaking of amazing things happening at CCSJ, we have some amazing people working at CCSJ. Uh, and so today we invited some of our members of our athletic department to join us. And for, for those of you that understand uh, Calumet College and have, have followed the school over the years, you understand that uh, athletics plays a pretty large role in terms of uh, the student life and, and culture at CCSJ. Our coaches are a big reason for that. So without further ado, I want to introduce a couple of our guests. Um, first, we have uh, Andy Marks, who uh, uh, is a veteran at CCSJ, but stepping into a new role. So Andy is two to my right here, and he was promoted recently to Executive Director of Athletics and Enrollment Operations. He's uh, held coaching positions in the department. He's been enrollment uh, as uh, anybody working there knows, Andy has contributed in, in various ways. I'm excited that uh, with this new title, I can just give more and more work to him <laughs> uh, and not feel bad about it. So welcome. Good morning, Andy. Good morning. Thank you. We also have Marcus Jefferson, our head men's basketball coach, uh, uh, was, an, on the assist, uh, was an assistant with the staff last year, taking over the helm this year. Um, we've got some exciting things going on in the basketball season, which we're going to get into. And, of course, Jay Novak, our head coach for sprint football, um, which is a new sport that we are rolling out at CCSJ. Jay's going to talk to us a little bit about sprint football and what we have on tap. Um, so with that, gentlemen, um, I, I, I want our folks, uh, our listeners, and, and so make sure we don't disappoint uh, Kuziak, who, who, uh, <laughs> who, who threatened us basically to not lose his audience <laughs> right after following up. We've got to make sure we keep this interesting. Um, I, what I want to make sure Wave Nation knows and, and any of our listeners knows, a little bit about you guys, right? And, uh, you know, uh, um, selecting a coach for us is an important process because we want to make sure that we get it right for us but for our student athletes. So, Marcus, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you just tell uh, the audience a little bit about yourself and, and, and what brought you here to CCSJ? You know, before, before we start, I got, I got to say, okay. Wednesday night was a spectacular <laughs> game. <laughs> Coach Jefferson gets his first win on, our, on, on the home court, brand new home court. Check it out on our social media. Uh, but ball in the air, gym dead silent, buzzer goes off, ball through the hoop, and you get your first win. So 
I'm, I'm sure that sure that felt good after everything. It really did. Um, I've had the pleasure of being a part of two buzzer beater wins in my coaching career, and as of right now, that has the title. That's the greatest one thus far. Hopefully, we'll be able to win without the aesthetics of a buzzer beater, <laughs> but I'll take them how they come at this time. Well, I, I'll tell you to add to that. So my dad was with me in the audience, and uh, we're sitting in front of Dr. McCormick, the, our college president, and uh, when Wyatt shot the three, I think you said you knew it was going in. I felt the same way. It goes in. I'm jumping and hugging my dad. I turn around, high five, and Dr. McCormick. I mean, yeah. it, it was a, a great atmosphere. So, what a great way to tip off the season. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. That's awesome. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Coach. Well, um, I'm a region guy. Um, 40 years old. Been in Northwest Indiana all my life. East Chicago guy, and uh, just Northwest Indiana and in, in Indiana entirely is a basketball state. Uh, growing up in this area, it was just basketball. All I knew was basketball, so that kind of allowed me to shape an identity and build friends and have relationships. And actually, it was basketball that started getting me out of my immediate community and meeting people from uh, other races, other places, and um, that was kind of a journey. And it's taken me pretty much to several other countries and uh, afforded me to have an all-expense-paid education, and that's the benefit that I've received from basketball at this time. Um, it's also afforded me an opportunity to provide a, a career for myself. Now makes about the 14th year I've been coaching, about six years as a head coach, and I'm just so excited to continue to pour back into these young men through the game of basketball and building life skills as well. It's amazing. It's amazing when you get to do what you love every day, isn't it? Yeah, um, I, I strongly emphasize to my guys four Ps, right, and that's having passion. And through that passion, finding your purpose. And through having passion and purpose, you kind of figure out how you're going to go throughout things. So it's passion, purpose, pride, and poise. And I strongly emphasize that to my guys. And you can see that. You can see that on the court. You see that passion come through on them when they're Absolutely. on the court. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's great. So you talked about your own experience mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as an athlete, as a student athlete. Um, you know, how does that shape – uh, your approach to, to your student athletes as a leader? How, how does that allow you to, to connect with them? Well, on that journey of being an athlete, it's not always a, a, a pretty path. And, you know, sometimes it gets difficult. And I think it's naturally for us to want to give up and quit. Uh, the motivation I found in myself, I always told myself, someone is going to benefit from my struggle. Someone's going to benefit from my journey. And now that's the culture that I'm building now at CCSJ with my team, primarily uh, family and unity and being one, but also paying it forward. Someone helped me to be where I am today. And so now I'm relinquishing the responsibility to you guys. So if I'm going to help you, you go back and help someone else. And I think that's really starting to build a cohesiveness of a family unit with the guys now this year. And that's allowing us to gel as rapidly as we, as we have uh, thus far this season. That, that's great. I, I see Coach Novak shaking his head up and down. Not shaking, nodding his head up and down. <laughs> He's uh, it, it, stealing a lot of my thoughts. No, in, in, in I, love it. I love it. Well, I do, I do want to pivot to you because in, in our interview process, uh, in, in searching for our, next, our, our first sprint football coach, uh, you know, you rose to the top in part because of the things that, that Coach Jefferson's talking about um, uh, in terms of giving back, the, the type of the character that we're looking for in our student athletes and the type of culture you want to create. So I do want you to, to talk a little bit about that, but I also want you to introduce yourself to the audience as well. You know, one of the things that we're most excited about is we're building, um, uh, you know, our programs for through some local coaches that, that have grew up in the region and understand the area and uh, and what our student athletes need but so so tell the audience a little about yourself well uh, I'm a graduate of Highland High School um, got into coaching uh, in oh, man I'm getting old <laughs> 19 <laughs> 1997 uh, at Whiting High School uh, under Jeff Kane amazing experience there uh, moved on uh, just because I aspired to continue to want to grow as a coach and you know uh, so there were some opportunities that led me to East Chicago as an assistant, uh, which led to another opportunity at uh, Hammond Clark as a head football coach and then back to East Chicago as head football coach there. So I was a head football coach for eight years, um, over 25 years of experience here in the region, uh, schools being Lake Station, East Chicago, Whiting, Hammond Clark, uh, Portage, and Andrean currently. Um, we... Um, just uh, the the relationships that I've built and the networking with uh, all the local coaches in the region, um, like Coach has said, I mean, it's taken me on a path that uh, uh, 
has really uh, kind of excited me to see what we can do going forward because of uh, those relationships. I'm looking forward to uh, getting out to the region coaches. I've been a member for 25 years of the Indiana Football Coaches Association, uh, Region 1. Uh, looking forward to explaining to those guys what sprint football is, and we'll talk about that in a little bit here. But uh, yeah. excited, um, excited about this opportunity. At, well, Thank you. one of the paths that you're you're taking is is leading to tonight's uh, uh, matchup, right? Uh, uh, you're you're on the sideline still with Andrean as you guys pursue the uh, the championship run, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm fired up. I I'm not gonna lie right now. Um, uh, there's uh we're uh, playing Laville tonight here on WJOB. Okay. Um, we uh, it's that all those things that coach was just talking about. It's that uh, relationship you built with your guys, the family atmosphere, the self, you know, keeping each other accountable, uh, the expect expectations for each other. And I'm I'm getting real fired up right now because it's game day. But uh, it's uh we're looking forward to kick off right now so I can go out there w with my guys and. Uh, we're, uh, you know, preparations in. Yeah. Anticipations there. It's going to be a huge game. Yeah. Uh, big crowd, and uh, well, we're looking forward to kickoff. Right. Well, so we, we just put it that way. I got to tell you, the, the excitement's always here. Right, right after he takes the position, I get a text message the next morning with a fire emoji, and I'm looking down at a new coach texting me with a fire emoji. I'm like, oh goodness, what's happening here? And all I see next is I'm fired up. We're going to do this yeah. thing. <laughs> that, that, that's great. Well, uh, we're fired up uh, to have you on board, Coach, as we've talked about a lot, and certainly wishing you and Andrea and, uh, all the luck in the world here as you, as you continue on this championship run. Thank you. Um, but you mentioned sprint football, right? So, we, you know, I've had this conversation uh, since we made the announcement this summer uh, about uh, being founding members of the Midwest Sprint Football League. So Calumet College is uh, one of the founding members with a number of other schools here in the Midwest uh, for a sprint football league. But but for folks hearing the word sprint football, and they say, spring football? No, sprint football. What is sprint football? Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to just really getting getting the message out about what sprint football is because um, I've had a lot of coaches. Uh, we've been recruiting now. Um, you know, I, I've, I'm, I'm here in a part-time role, uh, and uh, we, are, we have reached out to a lot of kids across the country, and mm -hmm. we can talk about that in a little bit. But the, the main question from – their coaches that we do the background check with, uh, to coaches in the area. Hey, is this nine on nine ball? Is this seven on seven? And uh, no, the reality of it is it's eleven on eleven football. Um, though there is a weight limit, it's one hundred seventy eight pounds. Let me go back and give you a little history. Nineteen thirty four in on the East Coast, Army, Navy, Post University, Cornell, Manchester, and there's about a league of eight of them now. There's been some programs that started it and then stopped it. But long story short, there's an East Division that's been playing for a very long time that has expanded out to the Midwest, and Cal College has picked up that uh, that portion. So there's a founding uh, founding uh, Midwest Sprint Football League mm -hmm. um, with uh, uh, five other schools in. And uh, long story short, we're they're they're kind of thinking that Sprint Football is going to be moved to the south to the west they're going to continue to expand this thing so right. this is kind of huge here. it is and uh the uh so the biggest thing is it's it's kind of like wrestling when it comes to we got to weigh in and mm -hmm. make sure we're 178 pounds or less uh it's going to be a very fast game mm -hmm. so your defensive tackle is no longer 300 and some pounds and the running back can run away from him because he can he could pursue and catch you you know yeah. down the field because he could run just as fast right so it's intriguing. It's an opportunity for uh, guys that are undersized. Uh, I will tell you that I am getting emails from kids from all over the country, uh, long, locally. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of guys that are interested applying currently to the school. Um, and the biggest thing is they just want a chance, man. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they're self-motivated. I mean, uh, those are the kind of guys we want. You know, right. that, that, I mean, if you're getting overlooked right now, uh, you're not six foot five and, you know, 200 some pounds or you're not six foot five and can, I mean, we want you, we love you. Yeah. I mean, we, we want to, we have an opportunity for you to succeed. Yeah. And, and uh, we're fired up about that. I, I could tell. And, and, and coach Jefferson's over here shaking his, nodding his head. I, I love when you guys are in agreement because you know, when I hear coaches talk, you, you, and, and when you're on the recruiting trail, you're not, yeah, we're looking for talent and we want some of the best, but you're looking for, for, for student athletes that are committed that want to be coached, that want a chance. And so, Coach, you, you were nodding your head over there because you've had a lot of new faces this year in a short period of time, right? And so it was, it was a, uh, 
a whirlwind summer in terms of recruiting. And, and so talk to us a little bit about the, the, the gelling process with the team and, and how you've been working with these students, acclimating them to CCSJ as well as your, your program. Yeah, um, last year battling the pandemic, I think we may have had eight or nine guys. This year, we've also added a, a JV program, and we have about 30 guys now. So uh, wow. that's, that's, that's tremendous. Um, my passion to want to build a successful program at CCSJ and wanting to win, I'll turn over every stone on the ground to find the right players. Uh, my recruiting journey has traveled me out to east to Philadelphia, uh, and Coach Jeff Dan, my assistant, will go anywhere looking for players. But thus far, I've had the opportunity to recruit two international students, uh, one named Ajibola Koko, who was originally from Nigeria, and then Noel MP, who is from Cameroon. Uh, Noel was a member of the Cameroonian uh, Junior Olympic team or something like that. So really, really good kicks, really, really driven about being uh, – successful in the classroom and they bring their passion from the classroom to the court and that's worked out tremendously uh we added an addition of wide hughes wide is from huntington indiana so we had a tournament there this past weekend <laughs> and for whatever reason i've really developed a passion for farming and why did not talk about farming the entire trip to huntington so it's 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 been cool but uh one of the largest breakthrough moments we had came about four weeks ago um as a coach now I've always wanted to get the best out of the athlete, but we're having so many guys come together as one. I really had to tap into the person, get into the soul of the individual. And uh, what I did was I created what's called a restorative circle. Coach Novak is familiar with that because we've worked in education together. And pretty much what I did was have the basketball be a talk piece. And uh, I allow each student athlete to have at least three minutes with the ball and everyone else had a chance to listen to the other student athlete, the other ball player. And depending on how moving your story was, I may have given you an additional two to three minutes to speak. And when I tell you with that breakthrough of having men in that room sharing their stories and their backgrounds to where it moved them to tears, to where it moved other men to tears, I knew we got somewhere. That was the breakthrough that took place off the court. So as a coach right now, I realize that it's so important to get through to the player, I mean, get through to the person to get the most out of the player, and that's made my job easy. Gosh, that, that's, that's a great, great story. Love it. I yeah. love it. I love it, man. That's... <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for sharing. Well, yeah, Coach, Coach Novak, you love it. I, I'm not surprised because, again, part of the interview process and the things that you've shared, you know, one of your expectations of your players was going to be yeah, uh, you know, coach mentioned off the court, and you you talked about what they're doing off the field. So not only contributing in the classroom, but but giving back and volunteering, um, because you know every team that you've coached and been a part of, that's been an expectation of your program. Whether it's uh, donating time and and uh, with the township or 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 giving back in some capacity, right? And so these are some of the things that you're talking about doing with your program once we get those uh, those players in here next year. Yeah, I mean, uh, coach hit it on the head. Uh, one of the reasons we do do the uh, community service stuff is we get our guys off the court, off the field, together having conversations, really getting to know each other, uh, understanding where they're coming from, what drives them to, to be a student athlete at CCSJ or other places I've been. Um, those conversations really take over, especially when we get into battle, you know, on Friday, well, Saturdays now. But, uh, you know, th those things were I really care about you because now I really know you. You know, the, 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 the ball, the ball thing we've used together in restorative circles, you know, <laughs> at, at uh, East Central together as deans. Um, we do the same thing with, with football and, and, and with both of our teams, obviously. That's why I was over there shaking my head. I mean, I love it. Um, but it's really those relationships along with, you know, we want to connect with our community. You know, let's face it. This is the region's football team right now. Okay. Again, I'll say it, the region's football team. This is mm -hmm. a great opportunity, and we want kids from the region here. And that's what we really, we really want to target. You know, and we talked about uh, the type of kids we want, self-motivated that, you know, want to use uh, sports as a vehicle to their success, be great community members. Um, but along with that, we are going to get out there and uh, really just show the community who we are. We're here to help. Um, there's a lot of life lessons that could be learned with that, that they'll carry on with them the rest of their lives. So if you're, you're a mom or a dad or a parent, uh, just know when you come to CCSJ, you know, and you play football for us or, or play uh, basketball for us or any of our athletics, that we're, we're building 
good men and women here, and yeah. uh, they're going to give back and be great community members. Well, uh, uh, you, you're teeing up my, my next point or question, which is, which is great. I, I'm going to use the phrase that you, you just said is using sports as a vehicle to success and, and you know, bringing Andy back into this. Um, you know, you've been at Calumet College a long time. You've been in the athletic department. I mean, y you can uh, personally attest and tell individual stories, let alone talk globally about the student athletes that have come through there as leaders um, and gone on to do great things. Um, uh, you know, oftentimes it's it's some of our student athletes that are leaders in student government and and very involved in the university. So just just talk briefly about you know the, the department as a whole and 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 what it means to the school and the community. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we started athletics uh, 20 years ago, basically. Uh, at this point, I think it's the 21st year now. And um, as you look at the alumni that come through and the impacts they made in the community. Um, I got a text message last night uh, from one of the other vice presidents, Dion, and says, hey, did um, did so-and-so uh, play for you at Kelly Met College? I was like, yeah. And, oh, well, it's it's my daughter's teacher now. And I was <laughs> like, oh, wow, you know, that's it's amazing. And, you know, right there back, giving back to the community, um, you know, we have many that have moved on to professional careers, um, a few that have moved on to professional athletic careers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we just saw Kevin McCune from the bowling team win a PBA title representing us well. Um, but then we have other young men and women in leadership roles in the community um, that are that are helping in non for profits, education sectors, private sectors, and um, you know we see them come back to the games and we see them start to influence and help our student athletes that are here now and help them move on whether it's career based or just you know some some life advice. But you can see that tie and you know that tie is happening when you see them walk back in the gym and they're they're proud to be there and. You know, they're asking for a T-shirt to wear back in the community. You know, you know they have that love and passion for it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, y you know, you can feel it uh, on campus when you're there. And, and as you said, that when, when the alumni come back and, you know, have that sense of pride and, and willing to give back, it, it speaks to all the things that, that you two coaches have been talking about today, right? Um, we are – it's amazing how quickly uh, a half hour <laughs> goes. I think we joked before the show that we could probably sit and, and talk sports all day. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we are up against time. Um, I guess one, one final question is just, um, it, uh, you know, for, for either of you, uh, Coach Jefferson or Coach Novak, whoever wants to take it, just for, for somebody listening, a parent, a student, or they're going to share this, you know, what, what's a day in the life look, look like for a, for a CCSJ, you know, basketball player? Um, maybe they're thinking about coming here. And, and so what would they expect if they were going to play basketball for Coach Jefferson at, at Calumet College? Well, starting out, I would say expect to be challenged. Um, I believe that challenges brings out the best in us. Uh, expect to be challenged and have the expectation for success. Um, I have to get the best out of you as a person, as a student, and as an athlete. And like I said, paying it for it. Paying it for Calumet College is a great place to get an education. Uh, it's a great place to experience athletics in the college field and the college atmosphere, which we're building. And uh, come on aboard and join the Crimson Wave. <laughs> All right. Go Wave Nation. With that, uh, couldn't have said it any better. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me on, on this uh, beautiful Friday morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, the day after Veterans Day, uh, which is a great segue into uh, the next show, Veterans Views, the award-winning Veterans Views coming up next on WJOB and JED TV. Uh, thanks for listening.